In the last video, we looked at an example of projectile motion in which the projectile had an initial velocity that was completely horizontal. In this video, we'll look at an example of projectile motion where the initial velocity is at an angle. So imagine a curious physics student climbs a tree and launches a water balloon. The balloon is tossed from a height of 5 meters with an initial speed of 10 meters per second and a projection angle of 60 degrees above the horizontal. How long does it take for the balloon to strike the ground below? How far does the balloon travel horizontally before striking the ground below? And what is the velocity of the balloon just before it strikes the ground? For projectile motion problems, it's always helpful to remember that the motion may be distilled into the motion that's happening in the horizontal direction and the motion that's happening in the vertical direction. I like to set up two columns, X and Y, to keep the information organized. For projectile motion, the accelerations are always known. Remember that in the horizontal direction, there is no acceleration, so AX is equal to zero. In the vertical direction, the object is subject to gravity, so the acceleration is negative 9.8 meters per second squared. Now, by calling the acceleration negative, I've made a decision that down is going to be negative and up is going to be positive. And so it's important to remain consistent with that decision throughout the calculations. Next, I'll resolve the initial velocity into its components and add those to the columns. And of course, I know that the initial velocity is 10 meters per second and the angle is 60 degrees, so I can make those substitutions as well. Now, if you think back to the constant acceleration equations, you'll remember that there are basically five quantities that can reside in each of these columns. I have two, and so now we'll look for the rest. The final horizontal velocity is equal to the initial horizontal velocity since there's no acceleration in the x direction. Um, I don't know anything about the final vertical velocity. I also don't know t, but I do know that the time that it takes the horizontal motion to occur is the same as the time it takes the vertical motion to occur. And so those two times are the same. Finally, delta x is unknown. That's one of the things we're trying to find. And delta y is negative 5 meters. The negative sign is important. The ball lands 5 meters below the starting point, And I made a decision that down was negative. So the change in y has to be negative as well. So now that the lists are filled out, it's time to use the constant acceleration equations to calculate the answers to some of these questions. These are the generic constant acceleration equations that you've seen many times. And when working specifically with x, you can fix the equations up with x subscripts to really emphasize that they are focused on the horizontal direction. And likewise, if you're focusing on the vertical direction, you can fix up the equations with y subscripts and delta y's, etc., to really emphasize that you're working in the y direction. So let's start determine how long it takes the ball to reach the ground. Notice that this question is about time, and take a look at the lists. Anytime three of the five quantities in one of these lists are known, it's possible to use the constant acceleration equations to find the other two. Well, there's actually one exception to that rule, and that's when the first three items in the x column are known. But let's not worry about that for the moment, and instead, let's just notice that in the y list, we have three bits of information. And so if we combine those with t and find the right equation, we should be able to find t. So if you focus on the first equation, you can see that it's possible to make substitutions and to solve for time. And we find that time is equal to 2.23 seconds. So making those substitutions in the list, we're now in a position to answer the question, how far does the ball travel horizontally before striking the ground below? Well, this question is asking for delta x. So we can change over to the x version of the constant acceleration equations with the x subscripts. And notice now that you have three bits of information. And um, so combining those three with delta x, you can look for an equation that can be used to solve for delta x. And actually, once again, it's the first equation that's helpful.
Now the acceleration in the x direction is zero. So when you get rid of that last term, you have this equation that basically says that distance is equal to rate times time. Anyway, making the substitutions, we find that delta x is 11.2 meters. Transfer that result. And now we can attack the question of what is the final velocity of this object just before it strikes the ground below. Well, how can we find the final velocity in the x direction? Remember that the final velocity in the x direction is the same as the initial velocity in the x direction. And we know that that's 10 cosine 60, or 5 meters per second. How about the vertical final velocity? Well, let's change over to the other set of equations. And notice that we have actually four bits of information from this y column. And so that means that there are lots of options that you can use to find VFY. Any of these three will do the trick. And it's worth spending some time working out what VFY is using each of these three different equations to convince yourself that it doesn't really matter which one you use. You get the same result either way. Since I found delta t in the last problem, well, in two problems ago, I'm going to try to avoid using delta t. And so looking at these equations, that leaves me with this one. So making the substitutions and solving, we find that VFY is plus or minus 13.2 meters per second. Now, we know that the object has to be moving down by the time it strikes the ground. And so the negative 13.2 meters per second is the one that we want to choose. OK, so now that I've found the final velocities in the x and y directions, I'd like to show you the motion of the ball again to emphasize the significance of these results. So here's the motion of the ball. And here are the final velocity components that we found. Vfx is 5 meters per second, and Vfy is 13.2 meters per second. And this is the uh, composite final velocity vector. And so typically what you would want to do is you would want to find the magnitude of the final velocity vector. And because we have a right triangle here, we can use the Pythagorean theorem and find that the magnitude of the final velocity is 14.1 meters per second. And it's also typical to want to find this angle here. And you can use trig to do that. The inverse tan of VFY over VFX will give you that angle. And that turns out to be negative 69.2 degrees. And the negative value there is uh, indicating that the angle is measured clockwise from the positive x direction. So now we can go back to this question, what is the velocity of the ball just before it strikes the ground? And in fact, there are a variety of ways to represent the answer to that question. In magnitude direction form, the, an the answer is 14.1 meters per second at 69.2 degrees below the horizontal. In unit vector notation, you might write that Vf is 5 meters per second in the i direction, minus 13.2 meters per second in the j direction. And finally, uh, if you want to write your answer in bracket notation, you might write it like this. This is perhaps more typical of the kind of notation you use in calculus class. So now we've finished answering all three questions, and it's time for you to try working through some projectile motion problems on your own.